cool. What's going on, everyone? Got the man Warner here with me today. Going to rip a little Q&A. Hope everyone's doing great. What's good, everybody? What's up, Michael? What's up, Mark? You... <laughs> the streams of the real Amazon Accelerate. That's true. That you will true. learn a whole lot more than going to an Amazon conference. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, guys. And if you want to uh, learn a whole lot more of that as well, we have a free training we're hosting next Wednesday evening. So not tonight, but next Wednesday evening that you can register at at the link in my bio on Instagram or the link in the description um, right there. So it's go.thefbaroadmap.com slash register. If you're interested in again, step by step by step, ton of free game, Q&A, etc. Um, go ahead and register for that. But any questions you guys got going on right now, please, please speak up. We'd love to help. Yep. Those classes have been a lot of fun. Um, would love to see you guys on there. We'll probably go for like an hour, hour and a half, two hours, um, doing some Q4 prep, all that kind of stuff. Super value packed for you guys that, that show up to the to the live class. Um, what do you think of uh, flipping items from eBay to Amazon more risky than standard LA? Um, so I'd say marginally more risky. Um, it will be an issue if you do get the occasional inauthentic or IP can plan. However, um, that's going to happen really, really infrequently, like one out of every couple thousand orders. And for the type of margins you can get on that stuff, I can see why some people do it. Best items to look for during Q4, like anything that's giftable. So like a lot of people will just go straight to toys and stuff. Um, but like, look at the keep a chart and see, you know, last Q4, did it dip down that kind of stuff? And you'll see it on like makeup and like a lot of stuff that you wouldn't think about traditionally as Christmas products. Yeah, especially like smaller items that can go in stockings. Like makeup has a high perceived value and, and everything with a high perceived value is perceived much higher value yeah. in December. So, I mean, typically most of the stuff you guys are already selling is just going to do better. And I think it makes the most sense to just focus on that stuff. If I order from a store like Fragrance Scent, is there a way I can know if there's a product has transparency codes? That's a good question, Patrick. I don't think so, right? It, it's not going to have a transparency code unless the brand knows it's going to end up being sold to e-com usually, uh, which you can get. It's just going to have you're just going to get it wholesale. We've done it before, but it's always been brand direct accounts. Nice. Okay. Uh, what would you say is the benefits of sourcing OA versus eBay to Amazon? Is it possible to scale both? Yeah, definitely. So OA is going to have um, an easier scale just because you're not really going to be able to buy a bunch of the same item off eBay, typically, at least not at a really good margin. Um, while with OA, you are going to be able to get a lot of certain products off certain websites um, right there. So traditional OA, like from retailers, is going to be more scalable, but eBay to Amazon is going to have better margin. Yeah, the invoices are uh, a little shoddy on that, but. Employee. Well, that definitely that too, yeah. yeah. Um, Oscar, we got tons of uh, live sourcing videos on the channel, if that's what you want to see. Edited, edited together so it's a lot better for you than just kind of ripping stuff live too. Um, decline for Adidas basically requires invoice, which wasn't provided from the retail. What next? Uh, just keep some name in the email. Don't worry about an invoice. Yeah, yeah whatever you bought, especially if you're buying from like, uh, from adidas.com or something like that. That's that's perfect. Yeah. Picture on the announcement, ten years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think it's exa I think it's closer to like seven years old, six years old. Interesting. So it's a little it was weird. from it was from one of my buddies' wedding when we were like when I was like right after high school. Um, rapid fire prep center advice. Um, so I would say if you're asking that question, it's probably because you haven't gotten your first one yet. So the best way to get one is definitely going to be a referral from another seller. Um, as well as just make sure you vet them thoroughly. Like how long have they been in business? Um, do they sell on Amazon themselves? What's the projected turnaround time? How close are they to capacity, both in terms of workforce and space? I think that makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, another one that slept on is asking if they get a bunch of packages from a site that you like to buy a lot from. Because if they don't, they might be blacklisted. You might want somebody else. Um, but you're, you're on the chat a lot. If you're in the roadmap, you've got that prep center discount that we hooked you guys up with. So you can check that out too. Uh, how much do you recommend to start wholesale? Like at least like five grand if you're going to do wholesale. Less than that probably makes more sense to do I. Um, and I don't think there's a better cash flow business on the internet than OA or OA the last half of the year, wholesale the first half of the year, just like as your focus and just, you know, replan the stuff you found on the other business model. Oh, neat. Uh, do you guys turn on gift options for FBM or just doing Q4? I don't think that's an option with FBM, right? Because you're handling fulfillment. Yeah, I don't think it's maybe you can. I I've never looked into it. I don't I don't think you can, but Yeah, there's going to be way better upside to making more money, Brendan, than like I think worrying about that and such. Um I don't even know if it's an FBM thing. I have no idea. Um yeah. but 
Um, I don't, I don't even really know what it does. I think it's special packaging, right? That would make the most. Yeah, sense. you pay like four bucks, and FBA will like put it in like a gift wrap little bag, basically. Uh, but doing that FBM would be hilarious. You just have a bunch of people like wrapping presents. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. That's, that's, yeah. one of my, that's one of my worst deficiencies as a human being. Wrapping a present, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, yeah, you broke the uh, you broke the ungating question rule already. <laughs> yeah, we did. We tore we tore the bandaid off. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Ungating cools isn't working. Ah, uh, just keep submitting. Like, couple, see a couple ungating questions. They're tightening down on ungating uh, as they do every year before Q4. It just takes a couple more submissions now. Um, but everything still business as usual. Oh, this is a really good question. What product should people be looking for during Halloween? So you actually shouldn't be, you should be looking for stuff for Halloween now, um, especially if you're planning on FBA. It's getting close to too late for Halloween. I think Halloween's like October 27th or so. It's like always late, late October right there. So what you should do to find stuff like that, which I actually wouldn't even recommend just because it's so seasonal. Um, if you do want to do Halloween products, go on Amazon and search like Halloween candy, open up a bunch of listings see if you can find any that have a bunch of sellers and then go on Keepa, go to data, buy box statistics, go to 365, find the people who took advantage of it last year at the highest prices and storefront stock those people because those are the people with big brains that took advantage of it last year that probably will this year too. Yeah, same goes for Christmas stuff. Just look at the people who had the highest prices on everything. Uh, they were at presents for like six bucks. Yeah, I knew it was something like that. Uh, yeah, you can't do it yourself, though. No. Yeah, I don't think you can. Uh, it was the first nine to five job. The last real job I had was working at a chocolate factory. I was making that's chocolate back in the back. <laughs> was that fun or was it? Uh, did it get pretty old? No, it was. It was fun. I didn't. I was like just in the back. Like I didn't have to talk to anyone. I was just cranking some podcasts, like making chocolate. It was like nice. A <laughs> this man was insurance sales, right? So no, I mean I was chilling. I was an intern, so I wasn't doing shit. But okay. yeah, 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 basically, yeah. That's funny. Uh, shipping fees for FBA. Uh, it's like 30 cents a pound usually. Bunch of, uh, there's like three people who made the same Willy Wonka joke. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. So my, uh, at home in Pennsylvania, there's a chocolate factory nearby and it always smells like chocolate. Um, like our area is famous for that. Um, Gordon, awesome. you, have a, you have a promo code for TA, right? Uh, yeah, Hibby, if you use fields, you get a 10 day trial instead of the default. Uh, do you guys um, plug in... Uh, I was just gonna say, plug in uh, seller IDs and plug in KPF searches. That's that's the wave with uh, with TA now. I want that Scrooge McDuck money. Good terminology, right there. <laughs> How do you know whether to FBA or FBM a product? Um, the best way is list it forty eight hours FBM and see if you get the buy box. Um, the long answer is definitely like look and see if other people are FBM in that item. If other people have in the past via the buy box statistics. And then ideally, it's a product that's above 25 bucks, but below one pound, which makes it very economically efficient to FBM. Yeah, we got the we got the Joe Mazan in the building. What up, Joe? Um, what, con what categories did you concentrate on? Anything like if you're just getting started out, just look at stuff that you like kind of have a passion for if you do, because that's going to give you a big advantage. You know, like the right brands, you might know where to get good sales on stuff. Um, but beyond that, like anything's profitable. So anything that, that piques your interest, to be honest. Uh, yeah, and a um, couple more guys, over you guys since we mentioned it last. But uh, yeah, Miles just dropped a link in chat as well. Uh, next week, we're doing a free class for you guys. Going to break down all this kind of stuff, showing you in detail, step by step, um, building you know $10,000 a month business, a bunch of Q4 prep, Q&A, all that good stuff. So be sure to register down below for the free class. It'll be super fun. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, what are your thoughts on test stores and how should beginners utilize them? Yeah, so test orders are basically just making sure you can validate a product without overexposing yourself based on just risk tolerance and capital availability. So especially if an item's you know looking to be FBM, you can just grab like one to three units depending on your capital availability. Or if you have a little bit more capital available and you're looking to do FBA, you can do more than that. Uh, and just through kind of getting feedback from buying different products, you'll start to increase those quantities. Um, how to source Halloween products and Christmas products. I mean, anything that's going to sell faster during those holidays. We talked about that a little bit already, but, um, yeah, like Halloween's candy, like uh, sell products that sell faster during that period, but don't stop selling after the period's over. So don't sell Christmas lights, sell toys and shoes, right? It's going to sell slower in January, but you're not just stuck with it. 
Yeah, and I think another misconception with that is that products just become like bad at a certain point. Like, yeah. like the amount of questions I got is like, when the, when is back to school over? It's like when that listing goes from a thirty percent ROI or a fifty percent ROI, like clockwork, to a seventeen percent ROI, right? And you buy it up until then, because especially if a listing sells quick, it's really, really difficult for it to just go from good to bad immediately right there. And even if you did make a bunch of money in the process, but typically you're at the point where you have the leverage you're in stock and you can always liquidate it at a slightly lower ROI if need be and move on to the next, you know, niche or um, type of item. For sure. Uh, advice for being a good leader, leader for VAs. That's a good question. Um, share the success is the biggest one, right? So profit share if they're finding a bunch of good leads, like all that kind of stuff. Um, but also like celebrate wins. I think a lot of business owners have a tendency to be like, Hey, this lead sucks. This lead sucks. You're just silent about the other six ones that were really good that they found that day. So brag on them when they do well, let them know when they're not. And they're going to take their criticism a lot more seriously. Yeah. You've got to think about it. Like when you're playing on a sports team, like some of my best memories as a human being are when everyone was like hype about stuff It make, it gets, it builds further momentum yeah. and stuff. Like I, I was talking to one of my VAs last night about trying to grow on YouTube and we were like strategizing and like he was hyped, you know, I'm hype. And then, you know, we both get more done. We both make more money. For sure. Uh, if there's already multiple sellers in the listing, what's guarantee your stock will sell? So luckily the buy box is going to rotate between all sellers, usually like 95% of the time. It's going to rotate between all sellers who are similar price, similar shipping speed. So especially on like very arbitrageable brands, where you got 30 plus sellers, that kind of thing. It's just going to rotate between everybody who's FBA and is at similar prices. Uh, do you guys put money aside for taxes or you take capital out of the pile towards April each year? Um, so if you're worried about that, I would recommend reading the book Profit First. It's a really good system on how to always make sure, you know, you do as much as possible to not get screwed by that sort of things. So I think Profit First is a really, really good resource to you. But I put money aside and pay taxes quarterly. I'm also not a CPA. So, you know, I might be doing it completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the other one. Like after year one, you'll probably have, you'll have estimated quarterlies from your accountant. You'll have a better idea of what you'll be paying. Um, is it now already the time to buy for Christmas or wait for like Black Friday? Yeah. So uh, if you buy now for Christmas, um, you know, you might end up being profitable, but you could probably just buy that same inventory for cheaper during Black Friday. So I would focus on just continuing to block and tackle, buy products that are profitable today. And then before you know it, Black Friday is going to hit. You can buy those same items cheaper and then you can sell them a week or two after that at higher prices and higher demand. Uh, would you list the product if Amazon and Zappos dominate? If Amazon is, then no. But Zappos, you can definitely steal sales from, which is very funny because Amazon owns it, but they share sales for whatever reason. Yeah, you guys want to get used to using the uh, data button on Keepa and then hitting buy box statistics to make sure that Amazon's sharing the buy box more than like 30 yeah. seconds at a time. Um, good average sales quantity for a product. Uh, we look for like 30 sales a month, but really it's like a sliding scale where – the lower the sales per month, the higher the ROI. So you're going to figure out the sweet spot, but don't ever go below like 25 unless and that would be like a really fast seller. Yeah. And that's going to get really high sales rank as well. That'll be like, you know, 150 plus typically. Yeah. And such uh, good places to buy Halloween or Christmas items. So don't worry about like where to buy stuff. Let the data tell you, right? Watch some of Warner videos, some of my videos on product research. You guys are going to see good examples of winning products. And then you can just use SellerAmp to reverse source from those items. And then when you hit the Google button in SellerAmp, you're going to see what websites those products are carried on. And then those are typically where you're going to buy from. For sure. You ever leverage multiple season coming up? Yeah, Brandon, you, if you uh, if you can be like one of the first movers on those listings, you will make a ton of money for a day or two. A lot of times you see the price goes way down on those multiple listings, kind of equals out again. Um, but if you can be fast, then, then absolutely. We've made more money selling multiples outside of multiple season, to be honest, where it's not actually multiple and you're just FBMing it. Um, do you filter on certain number of reviews of product? Um, not necessarily, although obviously the more reviews and the better reviews a product has, the more it's going to sell. I'm much more of a fan of sales rank and keep a chart data to gauge velocity on an item though. For sure. Uh, what's the workaround for buying products? Uh, more than 12 at once. Yeah, yeah most sites are going to limit, but you can just place multiple orders. Depending on the site too, you'll be able to place, like Walmart, you could place a thousand orders for 12 over and over again and they'll ship it all. Some sites might cancel. So that's kind of part of the game as you as you start scaling. Have you met Charles in a roadmap call yet? Charles? Um, great I energy, Matt. So. Your next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I great. So. I, so I met him on Sunday night. Yeah, great. Okay. Energy. Great. Okay. Energy. Good to see you in here, Charles. Let me know.
Um, what about Kiva Product Finder? Is it better than Source Mogul? Yeah, so there's a difference between the two. If I'm not mistaken, Source Mogul is like kind of like tactical arbitrage. It's like an automated way when Kiva Product Finder spits out product criteria that you put in. Um, and I'd say uh, KPF is way better, but you can use them in tandem necessarily. Yeah. Um, I would just use TA if you're going to use one of those softwares that we tried source mogul. It's, it's just, they, they were like, Hey, good software idea. That's, that's the gist of the tool basically. Um, damn. 175%. Dang, growth. Good stuff. Good job, that's awesome. Love uh, it. How much can Amazon have the buy box for us to still buy and sell the products? So it depends on the velocity of the product. I mean, if something was like in a thousand rank and Amazon was sharing it like 10% of the time, Amazon had 90% of it, that could still be fine. Um, but in general, you typically want to see Amazon to be sharing at least like 30% or more. And as that was a good way you put it, the sliding scale, the less, the more buy box share Amazon has, the lower the rank. And then the higher the ranks, the less velocity, the more Amazon needs to be sharing to justify it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that is like, it's just risk reward. Like there's, there's so many forms of that. Uh, G open LLC right off the bat. Uh, I don't think either of us did. We were both broke college kids at the time so we didn't have anything to protect if you got a house and that kind of thing i would probably do that far. <laughs> um let's see how to speed up card verification are you talking about like getting verified with amazon i assume so yeah i mean it's just a postcard so there's no way to, to speed it up yeah uh you went on vacation mode put your store on vacation mode your back sales are horrible um you don't really get you don't get suppressed or anything like that for going on vacation mode so maybe it's a repricing issue i would check your prices yeah or inventory quality typically like almost every problem in this business is either, either a sourcing issue or an inventory uh quality issue uh do you need yeah. an invoice for all your products no however luckily you're gonna have one if you're buying from retail websites uh, but you're gonna only ever need it lifetime on like I don't know, one out of every 50, one out of every 40 items or so. Yeah. Just, just average it out. And that's even if you sell 50 per item, which is a lot. Yeah. So it's actually going to be a lot less. Yeah. Than and that's just if they like audit or like, hey, yeah. we need proof that this stuff's real or you get an IP complaint. Like most of the time, you're never going to use your invoices. Um, so if you are FBA, FBM with the listing that is FBA dominant, the buy box won't be shared FBM. Um, typically not. However, you're going to be able to see that in the data buy box statistics on Keepa. Yeah. But probably, yeah, you're going to have to FBA that item. Uh, when doing OA, do you focus only on items that are on sale most of the time? But also if it's like limited type stuff, like you can you can definitely make a lot of money at retail if it's going out of stock fast. Um. Good amount to start switching to wholesale. That's a good question. Um, to me, it's easier to sell 100K a month with OA. It's easier to sell 200K a month with wholesale. So if you're under 100K a month and you're liking OA, just keep scaling OA and then use a lot of that, the brands you're finding and a lot of the, the same products and just go contact wholesalers. Hey, we want this exact product they are already doing super well on. It's going to be easy leverage. Yeah, and it should be a gradual thing too. Like you don't just have to do OA or wholesale. Yeah. You can do both. You don't just have to FBA or FBM. You can do both. Like for example, you guys are going to hear us screaming loud from the mountaintops as you're hopefully soon to be rich uncle on your shoulder telling you guys FBA in October, FBA in November, and then December 1st, December 5th, we lock in and we FBM that whole month and replenish heavily. Another thing just off a lot of the Q&A we've been getting, I think that that's worth to be said for Q4, a lot of your December shouldn't really be purchasing new items. Now you might have to, um, but if you do Black Friday, right, a lot of December can just be repurchasing a lot of the same items and just like, cause you're going to see 80% of your profit from 20% of your ASINs right there. So the key guys is to spend the next two months testing as much as possible. So you can find those ASINs that really click for you from your favorite websites that let you buy big quantities, et cetera. For sure. Yeah. All that, all that testing you guys are doing, it's going to come in handy. And as you're finding those items where, oh, last Christmas, the price went up by 20 bucks, use your, uh, set up like a Christmas spreadsheet on salary app, just click it and then come back to that spreadsheet. You have, you know, 50, a hundred items that you found in September that go up in price later in the year. I saw a listing today in which the same seller had two offers, one penny apart. Is that even allowed? So it's interesting. That's one of the rules where it's technically not allowed, but they don't really enforce it. So I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it, but it's it's not allowed. It's probably multiple SKUs, in which case you don't manipulate the buy box if you have multiple SKUs on the same listing. Oh, I thought that's what, maybe it's not allowed. Anymore. Maybe it's allowed. It's, now. it's, it's, uh, we show up twice on some listings because yeah, yeah, yeah. we do the same thing. It's multiple SKUs. Yeah. Um, if you have multiple accounts, then yeah, you're definitely breaking the rule. 
Uh, when doing OA, how do you usually start? What catches your eye? Um, I would start with the stuff Warner and I show in our videos, whether that be the websites, types of products, et cetera, because those are pre-vetted as online arbitrage friendly, right? And then you're just going to use the reverse sourcing method from there, and then you'll pick up on stuff over time. I also think it's a great idea if you got like Marshalls or the Nike out locally to you to go check out those, take the seller amp app, scan as much as possible and good stuff will happen. I promise you. Yeah. Um, can you show how to connect Google Sheets up to seller amp? Um, honestly, I was just shooting a video on this exact topic so I can give you guys a quick little, uh, let's do a quick little demo do it. on the right. types of products to look out for and how to store it all that. Cool. We'll, we'll let the IG people see. Make sure too. I'm sharing the, uh, <laughs> right. yeah, let the right know. screen here if you want to throw me up there. Cool, cool. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, so this is a quick example I was looking at for a video. You guys can check it out on the uh, Seller Amp channel here in, uh, in a few days. But this item, like you see how the price goes way up during December. Um, usually it's selling for like, you know, 38, 40 bucks, something like that. It shot up to like 66. So you want to store these types of products, right? So just hook that up with seller amp so like i've got a, a christmas google sheet here you just click the button um, and that's going to send that information over to your google sheet you can see i was literally doing that earlier today um and to set that up it's on the back end of seller amp so go up here to sheets and then here i'm in my my christmas one you can configure all these columns do whatever you want with it um so this one's just pretty simple like i just want a list of stuff to come back to during christmas um but yeah super simple go ahead and make yourself a google sheet i'm back in a seller up here and that's what i'm talking about where you're sourcing you're seeing all these prices going up during q4 start storing that and then in early november black friday sales roll around you're gonna have a huge list of stuff it's like cheating when you're when you're sourcing products you've already found and while we're here on the demo so someone asked how seller amp works you mind showing everyone a quick 30 second run through just the profit calculator and such yeah yeah i mean you got the quick little seller amp run through you got your uh estimated sales Profit calculator, all that kind of stuff up here. Um, that's going to be super useful. And then the offers tab will probably what you be using as well. So come Q4, there's going to be a bunch of merchant filled sellers on these listings. Start popping up in these storefronts and checking out their uh, the products here. That's going to be another good way to uh, see what they might have bought on Black Friday, see if that sale's still going out, uh, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So it tells you like how fast products sell, if you can sell them, helps you find more products, and tells the exact profits that you can know, you know, how much you're making after fees, Amazon shipping, et cetera. Right sure. there. Cool. Cool. Sweet, sweet. Right there. Thank you. Been trying to figure that out forever. I literally have 30 folders. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Luckily, Mark, um, you got that. And then Mark, you know, if you're ever unsure of stuff like that, just hit up a uh, support at selleramp.com or ask one of us, you know, happy to help. But yeah, that's really important. So what all spreadsheets do you think people should be going ahead and setting up uh, just in general and also just with the holidays approaching? Yeah, I mean, the Christmas one is like the obvious one, right? But we also have them for like Thanksgiving and like there's a bunch of like, you know, three packs of like pumpkin cans, like that kind of stuff, like all that type of stuff. Just think outside the box, like what might sell really fast and super high during a certain holiday season and just start start making uh, different Google Sheets for it. Sure. And for any of you guys who are just like still super beginner level or, you know, you have questions and such, you want more free content, go ahead and register for the free training that we're hosting next Wednesday, which is in both of our Instagram bios, as well as it's at the link in the description. Um, and it's go.betfearoadmap.com slash register. So you can see it in the description as well, um, right there. How does SellerAmp calculate estimated sales? I know sales rank drop does not equate sales per month. Yeah, Steph, so it is an estimate, but it's based off the historical sales rank for the most part, a ballpark estimate of how much that product um, is selling right there. Yeah, it's our, it's our own method for figuring out sales, basically. Um, so again, it's an estimate. And usually, and I'd rather it be this way, so you're not overbuying. Usually, I've found it to be an underestimate. So if you find a really killer deal, just keep in mind that it might be a little bit higher. Yeah, and the nice thing, too, is that after a couple months, you aren't really going to need that data either. You're going to be able to really, really get most of what you need in terms of velocity on the product by looking at the Keep It chart. For example, if I go on Walmart's page, uh, where should I start finding? No, so the, the worst thing you could possibly do, this will make you hate your life, is go to a big website and just start looking for stuff, right? Yeah. That is a, a terrible idea because you're going to be looking at random brands that you don't even know if can be sold on Amazon, don't even know if you can get on Gaten. What you should do is watch Warner's videos, watch my videos, and look at the winning products we point out that are pre-vetted as online arbitrage friendly. Write down those brands. Lego, Nike, Neutrogena, Adidas, Method Body Wash, Bobby Brown, Laura Mercier, et cetera, um, Converse, right? And then you can storefront stock from those products using the seller and reverse sourcing method. If you don't know what that is, watch a couple of our videos and you'll know. And then you'll be able to find pre-vetted stuff. 
Um, and then going to Marshalls and scanning stuff is a great idea too. Yeah, and as you're doing more reverse sourcing, eventually you're not going to need to do any because you know the brands to skip straight to, and then and then you can like like Miles and I do most of our sourcing just opening up a website. Like I, we already know where to go. We've done enough sourcing. We know the brands to look at, the types of products, and that's that's just the bridge you're trying to to cross. And reverse sourcing helps you do it faster. Yeah, so like I do a lot of manual sourcing, but that's because I already know my favorite websites. I already know what discounts they have. And so it's really, really easily for me to execute on those websites and it's just not going to be for you when you're newer. It just, you know, it's not really going to add up. Sure. Best ASIN. <laughs> yeah, I got you, Nick. Right there. Oh, we're a couple of people asking for the best ASIN. Uh, seeing large difference in sales per month on selling up in Keepa. Keepa's estimates are... They are usually based on drops. That's probably what we're seeing if, if you're seeing Keepa's estimate. Um, stop giving out so much sauce. <laughs> no, we got you, mindful quotes. Don't even worry about it. Can you explain <laughs> Blue Ocean strategies for Amazon? Yeah, so by far the most Blue Ocean strategy, it's not even close. And this is incredibly hard to do correctly, is to find a group of like-minded sellers that you really get along with well, that you share spreadsheets with, that you share leads with, that you source together, that you guys talk about different opportunities and such, because that's what most other people don't do. Now, that in that takes a significant amount of work that does not directly show an ROI. I'd say that's definitely the best um, Blue Ocean strategy. Other stuff I would say is definitely getting to know employees at your retail store as well. Um, definitely. And then also getting around order cancels on websites that a lot of other sellers get order cancels on. Uh, what do you recommend for RA FBM seller during Q4 to keep focusing on uh, what you've been doing? Yeah. A lot of the, like, especially doing RA is going to make so much more profit because there's going to be stuff that's just like out of stock online everywhere. Um, but beyond that, like try to dabble a little bit in OA, like even like over the next couple of months, try to just test out some OA products. So you can, you can kind of stack that on top. Yeah, Stallion. And if you're seeing positive returns from RA, just start storefront stocking on SellerAmp online just for fun on those listings. And you're going to start to come across stuff um, OA as well. I think the nice thing about why RA is so beginner friendly is because there's not really discounts. It's kind of just like the price is the price, right? So it's a lot easier to understand. Meanwhile, with OA, it's going to be very, very rare for those of you guys watching this to just find a product that's profitable at the price it's listed on Walmart, for example. Typically, you need some sort of discount to make stuff profitable. Sure. Um, should take into consideration BSR drops. Uh, I would remove that from your KPI filters, to be honest. Just use uh, average sales rank. It'll basically do the same thing. And drops is like a weird way to count things. Uh, is there an issue you get a USPS receipt when you drop off FBN? You should you should get it because otherwise you don't have proof that um, you actually dropped it off. Unless yeah. you have like a digital scan, something they emailed to you, like you you just need that physical proof. Well, here's a ton of sauce. You can get the end of day report on Amazon and then you can have them scan all your packages in one right there. Because the goal should be for everyone watching this, it should be to unfortunately the old lady at the post office should have beef with you by December 10th. <laughs> right there. They, sh they sh Unfortunately, she just caught in the crossfire of us trying to fill this demand. Right there. Yeah. Your, your mailman should hate you like all that type of stuff like give them a nice little uh give them a nice little christmas bonus after they've made you uh thousands Ooh, seriously good question right here when you press the google button on sell amp is that the only method when looking for product when reverse sourcing no the other one is to right click if you're on a mac and hit search image with google as well i'm not sure the sh keyboard shortcut on pc for that but i'm sure i'm sure there is one for sure. Yeah. And also hit the Google button and then tweak the title a little bit and see if you can get it to you know, show different colors or if it's showing the wrong thing, see if you can tweak the title, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's a really, really good tip. Another thing too is seller amp isn't always going to match the buy box price or like the historical buy box price. It's actually never going to match the historical buy box price unless it's flat right there. So sometimes you'll need to tweak that on your calculations too. Um, do you mind, man? Postmaster hates you. Love it. That's a good thing. Anyone who, if your postmaster hates you, you're making money. Oh, that's damn. a good, uh, <laughs> you're pushing weight locomotion. That's all. That's, 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 some awesome, of the, that's, that's the wealthiest dog profile picture I've ever seen right there. <laughs> yeah. Mailman loves you. You FedEx guy can't stand you. That was what we had too. We had a super grump. We have grumpy FedEx people, but USPS, UPS is, is awesome. It's funny. Oh, I, I get a new FedEx in Pennsylvania. I'd get a new one weekly. They were all cool, honestly. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm always around to help them out and stuff, you know, yeah. you know, you we know, had, we had the same UPS guy for like two years and he changed routes and it was like a, it was like a whole thing. We were like, we were homies. <laughs> and that was at the crib. He, yeah, he yeah. knew our house. Yeah. He like, he loved us. We gave him snacks. Like <laughs> yeah, you gotta be nice to the mail people. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, do you use a VPN when sourcing a product? Um, yeah, but don't use it when you're purchasing typically, unless you're using like a really lesser known VPN. A lot of the websites have caught on to the IP addresses that all the VPNs switch your IP to and they'll start canceling those IPs. Latest day I would send inventory to FBA would be uh, if you're below 100K a month, probably December 1st to the 5th um, right there. And then honestly, if you're like really low volume, I would just be FBA in that stuff immediately just because like, it, it exposes you to extra risk and you yeah. need to, you need proof of concept when you're new and FBMing is such a good way to get it. And yeah, guys, any, yeah, I'm okay. I was just saying any, anything that you send to FBA after black Friday, especially like black Friday inventory is probably not going to be there on time. So just keep that in mind. And you want to make certain that you're going to make money on that stuff. So just FBM it right there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, quantity sensitive OA websites aware, aware of prep center addresses. It's going to depend on the site. That's an incredibly good question. Is that a good reason to use smaller prep centers? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a fantastic question. Yeah. Jill's a rock star. Yeah. That's a big reason why a mom and pop is important. You got that communication, but you've also got nobody else running it up on your favorite website. Is there any possible to ungate Kirkland signature? Isn't that a Costco brand? I think it's Costco. Yeah. You probably yeah. just rip 10 units on Costco.com most likely. Yeah. And if you guys see other people selling a product guaranteed hundred percent, you can get ungated in it too, or 99% of the time, as long as it's like moderate review sellers and such. You guys always price up at the current buy box or y'all increase the price since it's FBI? Depends on the listing. However, that's an incredibly good question. Typically, when you send in products to FBA, you want to price a bit above the lowest FBA because Amazon might show your inventory on the listing early, even if your delivery date isn't ready and you don't want to cause the listing to tank as a result of that. Yeah. Um, when do they accept multiples? October 15th. So... Uh, if you do want to source some multiples, you'd probably be buying those in like a week or so, to be honest. Ooh, see, this is the questions we should be asking. Yeah, latest time of the day you should put <laughs> uh, for FBM settings. It depends on your schedule, but I mean, it's going to get like just depending on what you kind of got going on. Like if you're full time, maybe I would do like three, um, but you probably want to do like 11 a.m. honestly. But like, hey, hey, we need this bag. Like I like, uh, you know, as late as you can do it to still fulfill these orders. And occasionally you might have to ship sure. one the next day and it's not going to be a huge deal. Yeah, how do you typically handle shipping those large uh, merch fulfilled loads of UPS? Yeah, so schedule the pickup at your house. Um, and that goes for all the merch fulfilled packaging that you guys are about to do as well. Um, with UPS, it's like anywhere from like six to 12 bucks for them to come pick it up for you. USPS is free. Um, so yeah, just get that scheduled the day before and they'll come They'll come do the work for you. I, I was driving my stuff to the UPS store for way too long. <laughs> Yeah, and some sauce on that too, guys. If you get to know your UPS driver well, they might just come every day for you, especially if they're delivering stuff. Yeah. And you can save money. This is kind of a new thing as of last year. You can save money buying pickups through pirateship.com, which is only $4. Um, and then also to occasionally shipping for Amazon, just buying shipping for FBM through Amazon, which is what you should do 99% of the time. It'll occasionally be egregiously high. Split test that order, plug it into Pirate Ship, which is a third-party shipping service. It might be cheaper, so you can save some money doing that too, occasionally. Right there, yeah, yeah, four or five bucks. That makes sense. Yeah, Locomotion just dropped the. Uh, Locomotion's got the uh, the FBM yeah. game on. Yeah, on yeah, lock, yeah, bro. Yeah, love it. Yeah, 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 love it, love it. Uh, Nine a.m. same day. It's interesting, man. So it's actually it's twelve thirty p.m. in Pennsylvania for same day pickups for UPS. At least. Wow, it was like six bucks in Arkansas. Yeah. It changes. It changes based on location. Yeah. Yeah, which is funny. Yeah. Was, was Pirate Ship six bucks too? I didn't know you could buy pickups through Pirate Ship. Six, six bucks. Point. Six bucks was yeah. cheap enough for me to never seek an alternative. There we go. Yeah. So yeah. that's new as of like a year and a half. And it used to that's be cool. free back in the day. Yeah, it was free. Yeah. <laughs> People used to be looping. Like, like dude would be like, "Yo, can I get an FPM tracking number?" <laughs> 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 Let me hold the tracking number. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Uh, if you're stuck selling less than a thousand a month, you got other expenses eating away at capital. Um, if you if you can't sell more than a thousand bucks a month with your current capital, you should probably get a job, start a service business, that kind of thing, until you've got a thousand bucks or two. Yeah, and either way, while you're doing that, like just even just to like work, just to get a good work ethic, like go on Facebook Marketplace, toss up the "Who's yeah. Got Free Books for Me" post, yeah. go pick them up right there. Yeah, it's, it's time to hustle. It's not time to over leverage in a business you don't understand yet. Miles been harassing me to get to, yes, Joshua, I need, <laughs> you, I need you squeezing this 10K profit month in December. And that goes for actually all 145 of you guys in here watching. 
um, right there. We're here to help on all this stuff. Any questions you guys have, please let us know. This is a huge Q4 for so many of you guys. So many of you guys are going to be able to see years of extra freedom flashing before your eyes. And I need you prepared to take advantage of that right then. The best way to do that is to register for the free live training linked in the description and in my Instagram bio right there and in Warner's go dot the FBA roadmap.com slash register. Go ahead and get registered for that thing. Yeah. And we'll see you there. Yeah. Right. That does going to be super fun. It's been a, uh, we've done a, f a couple of them so far, tons of good feedback. Um, the last one, especially where I think we're just going to adopt that one, make it even more, uh, more sauce for you guys. And, uh, should be a blast. So definitely check it out. Link down below. Uh, dude, that's actually pretty good banter. Cause one of my friends is doing a lot of good stuff on Walmart. So not currently, However, um, I remember us talking about that like years ago. I am a novice just interested in breaking free. Well, my friend, luckily you can do the prerequisite 10 hours of YouTube watching and not be a novice very, very quick um, <laughs> as well. So I'd recommend doing that. Minimum number of packages, one uh, for a UPS pickup, one. Yeah. Mar <laughs> yeah. Mark, Mark knows what's up. He's selling 10K a month driving Uber for cash flow. Yeah. Pump more, more money in the, more money in the system. All that is going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, that's before. nice too because you can listen to like audiobooks and podcasts too and everything yeah. so you can learn new stuff you pop up in a nice little buy box bandits app right <laughs> yeah, like, hey, pump, yeah pump the buy box bandits right there uh do you have insurance yeah once you sell um i think it's ten thousand bucks over three months uh they'll make you get insurance but you can get it for like you know a few hundred bucks a year it's nothing too crazy okay, um, the so hartford are next Okay, we got Stone checked in. Stone, I was worried right there. Um, Pickle Rick checked in. Uh, no Elijah sighting yet. No Armand sighting yet. Um, so we, you know, we we got some time, guys. But you, I know you two are watching the replay. Come on, this is the first one you guys missed in a while. <laughs> Why is the thumbnail is the youngest picture of me? We should um, we should start using pictures of me progressively one year younger until it's <laughs> until it's like 12 year old me in the thumbnail. <laughs> Um, if you had 200 to your name, how would you start Amazon? I would delete Instagram immediately. I would delete Snapchat immediately. I know you have it and you shouldn't have it. That's the first step. I would get a job. Second step. Third step. I would look up how to sell used books on Amazon. I would watch those videos. I would watch up how to, how to flip couches on Craigslist. I would go on and find everything people are giving away for free. I would take it. I would sell it on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, et cetera. Understand that this is going to be the hardest thing you do in your entire life. Um, that's exactly why you need to do it right there. Because you've only got 200 bucks to your name. There's very little you can do as a human being. Unfortunately, <laughs> you got to get your bag up. You got to get your skills up. Uh, look up Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book. Read that. How to Get Rich, Naval Ravikant. Look up that on YouTube. Listen to that podcast right there. Um, and trust that... We have your best interest in mind, my friend. But you got to get your bag up, man, badly. <laughs> the pregnancy announcement and this is the uh, thumbnail pick. That's a good one, Brett. <laughs> Interesting. This is a good question. Do I need a separate account in order to sell my branded clothing from my Shopify store? Um, not necessarily. However, it probably makes sense to you. Now, it, getting a second Amazon account open is a little sketchy um right there so i'm not going to give you any advice on how to do it because i don't know the current correct way to do it right there um so and i, I don't want to screw you over at all um i would probably make a separate account if i were well, you yeah. well i agree i just don't know how i don't know how to do it correctly because they changed the rules and stuff yeah you're still technically allowed to have multiple accounts but if you don't keep them separate like separate computer separate ip all that kind of stuff if one gets hit it doesn't matter they're all going to get banned Ooh, interesting. Okay, I'm working on this one. I'll let you know when I get it down. Right? I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, difference between authentic or uh, authorized distributors. Um, I mean, most of them, like, if you're not sure on a supplier, like, just, like, Google them, like, company name scam. Look at them for, look at their Better Business Bureau listing, like, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's no formal thing like authorized. That shows yeah. me that you were around a couple of years ago on um, Burhan when like everyone, I was like super like, oh my gosh, is it authorized? There's like no such thing. It's just basically just like, is the website a scam? Yes or no. If they've been around, they have any type of like brand name, like you'll be good to go. Yeah. 10K profit for how much in sales would you figure to make that? It depends on the business model, but like a nice OA business should be around like 60 a month, depending on how much you want to work. Yeah, 40 to 50 during Q4 with merch fulfillment, that kind of stuff. Well, exactly. Yeah, multiple accounts. And there, there was other stuff, unfortunately, that went wrong with that that caused that. 
Yeah. How much money do you need to have to make OA a full-time income? So if you think about it, Patrick, like if your average ROI is 30%, then, you know, how much do you need to replace your income? Like 4K, right? Or what, just for the sake of example, I'm going to use 3K. So you'd spend 10K every month to make 3K in profit, right? So then you got 13 and then it snowballs. So do the math, whatever your average ROI, and then you can you can figure out what it would take to like replace your income. Uh, will the workshop tonight be available for replay? So the workshop is actually next Wednesday. Um, so luckily, my friend, you can check that out. Yeah, we'll get a really over your replay available right there. Do y'all have a VA? We have several. Yep. Recommend selling in Mexico and Canada. It's up to you, Jonah. Um, I don't. However, a lot of smart people do. Um, it kind of just depends on your preference and like if you want to be occasionally tracking the item down. But it is going to give you a sales boost. <laughs> Had a supplier ask to send pictures of your shop to get a wholesale account. Um, yeah, you're, you might be in trouble there, Dylan. Um they probably they want to see like the uh, an actual brick and mortar something you can do like long term it's not worth it right now unless you're pumping volume but um like partner with a local store or get a local storefront like the cheapest one in town and just like set it up just like random stuff right so you're paying you know 800 bucks a month for a storefront but it opens a bunch of accounts for you uh okay so we got actually a bunch of good questions which side is best for VAs? i've had the best luck with onlinejobs.ph yeah. Right or just just throw out a tweet too like there's a lot of a lot of people who are seeking jobs and that kind of stuff out uh, on socials feedback on Kohl's covering up uh the product barcodes with their own that's tough with our occasionally you can give a little nudge see if you can hit the barcode see if there's other units of that same item or unfortunately some stuff you're just not going to be able to scan without like technically committing like kind of theft like <laughs> you know, changing the thing up right there um how can you make sure VA isn't also lying, uh, working for other people? Uh, well, luckily, if you're tracking their profit and they're making you plenty of profit, then it probably doesn't really matter. If they're not making you profit, then it's not going to make sense anyway, right? And if they're sharing it with seven other people, then they're not probably making your profit. So as long as you're tracking the back end profit, what they're actually generating and not just like what you're spending on their leads, you'll you, you'll be fine. Uh, solely FBA is not a good method for after back platter. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a horrible method. That's actually probably the worst combination of stuff you could do. Um, now you are going to make money just cause you'll be buying stuff so cheap. Um, but it's just going to take a while for that inventory to check in. There's no guarantee that it'll be available. Therefore there's no guarantee that you'll be able to replan and then replan that same inventory again, when there's a hundred percent certainty that you'll at least be available to sell it at the peak pricing. If you do FBM during that yeah. time. Yeah, all like thing, things didn't work out super well for us to do a bunch of retro film at last year, like we did the year before, and we just Black Friday a bunch of FB, FBA stuff. Uh, but we would have made way more money if you FBM. Uh, when will Halloween sale start? Uh, generally, talk about Nike products. Um, so typically, it'll be like the Thursday before Halloween, um, right there. But I wouldn't really worry about that for now. There's honestly like a bunch of OA sales going on, um, like as is today, even. So, like, I would focus on that stuff. Um, FPM supply checklist for December 1st, uh, Uline boxes, uh, shipping scale, uh, p uh, shipping labels from UPS for free, um, get you a nice little, uh, like a Rolo or something like that. That should be it. Boxes, tape, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, poly mailers definitely for yeah, clothing, yeah. um, which you can just get from Amazon. And I'm going to make a free guide, like a Q4 guide for all you guys. That'll be nicely good. That's a super good question though. Can I just cover the price tag? Yeah, or, or tear it off or cover with a blank F and C label. Yeah. Is there a Prime Day coming in October? There is. Those there days. is, yeah. 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 I, didn't, I didn't even know. Like, there's like 15 Prime Days now. Like, <laughs> they have the American public so fooled. The nice part is that there's going to be a bunch of competing sales those days from yep. LA sites, boys and yep. girls. That we can yeah, there's more and more Prime Days every year, which just means more and more random, awesome sale days for places to source. I don't have an LLC. Will I still be able to create a professional sale account? Yep. 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 You do not need an LLC. However, it may be the best thing for you um, right there. Honestly, Corey, with how well connected you are, you probably have a good VA that already follows you on Instagram right yeah. there, Corey, honestly. Um, however, uh, I, I do think those services can be good right there, but I, I would pick someone that follows you because they probably already know you and your personality a little bit, you know, what you're about. And such, but or even even if it's just to get some management experience from the ground up, make an online jobs.ph post and see what happens too, man. Do some interviews, do some one week paid trials, that kind of yeah, stuff. Especially if it's a sourcing VA, I wouldn't do that, Corey. If it's admin, you could think about it. What wouldn't do the service? Yeah. If yeah. it's an admin, you could think about hiring somebody who's pre trained, but sourcing is way simpler to train. Ooh, if you're FBMing an article of clothing, how 
well spoiled it be? Um, well, I don't think I'm very qualified to answer this one um, right there, but I'm never really worried about it. I mean, if it's like a t-shirt where it's very like shape shifty yeah. and such, you give it a little fold um, right there. The nice thing is I would always ship be shipping that stuff in really small polymer. So it like actually made it pretty easy. Like it was pretty compact and such. But yeah. yeah I, I most of the time it's just gonna unfold itself anyway. I wouldn't I wouldn't know right. it. Especially if it's in a box. <laughs> Uh, you don't have LLC, will you be able to create professional seller account? Yeah, you can do sole prop as professional. Oh, uh, do I put uh, under my name or add my company? Um, I would do both, honestly, but you can do either. Like the the, I would rather do name than company name, but you can do either. Uh, yeah, yeah, Amazon label for yeah yeah. So typically, Amazon label for ninety nine percent of orders. Occasionally, pirate ship when it's egregiously high. Um, right there, which is going to be 1% of orders right there. And then, yeah, pirate ship for the pickup, unless you happen to be like driving by UPS or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mark, when you're prepping close for FBA, you'll probably just polybag everything. Like if the outside of the package or it's got, you know, fabric, anything like that is going to get dirty at the warehouse, always just throw in a poly bag. Cool, cool, sweet. All right, guys. Well, thanks everyone for coming out tonight. It was a lot of fun. Had around 120 of you guys in here. Um, make sure if you haven't already get registered for the free training, um, you can do so at the link in our bios on all platforms or the link in the description, um, on YouTube right there. Awesome. Yeah. Going to be super fun. Thanks for, uh, hanging out with us guys. We'll see you on the live class next week. We'll probably go live at least once or twice before then here as well. So, uh, thanks for hanging out guys. Keep, uh, keep crushing it. Let's make a bunch of money through the rest of the year and yeah, get after it. Cool. All right. Have a good night, everyone.